Now, can you imagine a 39-year-old business with a budget four times larger than six years ago yet can't make a penny? The Greater Miami Opera Association is such a company, but of course it's nonprofit. Nancy Solomon went backstage and found that opera business is hard work that enhances the arts, but more importantly, perhaps, promotes growth in South Florida's economy. The excitement and glamour of opening night at the opera, it's the highlight of any production, but it only lasts a few short hours. What isn't so glamorous are the months of preparation it takes to get a production like this off the ground. Let's go back just one week and I'll show you what I mean. One and two and one. Yeah, they come, folks, it's a C natural. The third note and sounds, uh, some of, uh, one of you plays half a C sharp. One week from now, the symphony orchestra must play as one instrument in D. Flatermouse, a comic opera. Yeah, Guest conductor yeah, no, Franz Ahlers rehearses yeah, the musicians yeah, note by note. The 50-piece orchestra is expensive to assemble, rehearse, and perform. But by now, time and money have already been spent on, among other important details, designing costumes and sets, contracting talent, and setting schedules. General Manager Robert Herman says the scope of creative talent and labor makes opera the most expensive cultural activity in South Florida. You know, if you compare the cost of the opera to the Philharmonic, well, the Philharmonic is a symphony orchestra. We've got a symphony orchestra, but that's only a small part of our operation. We've got a theater company. And get really close to it. And shh, get really close. And shh. We've got a ballet company. We've got a chorus. We've got stagehands. We've got an uh, activity that contains so many more people than any other one of the normal cultural activities. In performance, what passes by in seconds may take hours of rehearsing to perfect. Metropolitan Opera veteran Colette Boki works on difficult passages in a piano rehearsal. Namely? Instead of was I born the second time, must I be a lady's maid? Now, <clears throat> uh... Which one? I don't dig you. The budget this season is $2.4 million. That's not much compared to the Met in New York. The Metropolitan Opera spends roughly four times as much as Miami for every production. Despite a slim budget, this company imports big names like internationally famous Beverly Sills. Her performance in D. Flatermouse here is one of her last on stage before she retires in the fall. Sill so says Miami stands out from other regional opera companies by allowing adequate rehearsal time. Preparation is important to her. She says she tries to give her best in performance. It's a great mistake to underestimate the intelligence of your audience. You can't put anything over on them. If the sound of your voice doesn't please them, it doesn't please them, period. They don't have to know anything about singing techniques. It's very much like looking at a painting. Well, like one can't, you know, perform 100% all the time. That's unrealistic. But I've never walked out feeling that I didn't try my damnedest to give them as much as I could. Some days, of course, you know, for whatever reasons, you just can't function at a top level. Opening night is only days away. Meanwhile, the German wig maker weaves and curls human hair. Beverly Sills, of course, wears the red wig. Originally designed costumes get a final stitch. Singers and actors try out their parts together. It's a frenzy of activity leading up to only a few hours of entertainment. It may seem pointless to the non-opera buff, but Beverly Sills believes we have a spiritual need for beauty. Well, I think what separates the two-legged animal from the four-legged animal is something called the soul, and I think that soul has to be fed. Um, and anything that the individual who possesses this soul feels is beauty, whether it's art, painting, sculpture, music, whatever. Oh, yeah, I that <laughs> right? That's how we get rid of Frosh at that moment. Opera is a part of what can be a cultural richness in a community like ours, and that richness could literally translate into dollars. If a community doesn't have a good cultural and a good educational atmosphere, it's not going to be able to draw new business. It's not going to be able to bring executives and their families into a community. They want to go where they can live and live a life that is rewarding and not just a life where they can make money.
And our business community has realized that. In the last three years, they've turned around 180 degrees. Three years ago, they weren't interested in being involved in the cultural community. And now, the support from business is tremendous, and the interest of business is really tremendous. It's finally time for dress rehearsals just two days before opening night. Conductor and director make changes and occasionally stop to iron out problems. In the main plot of Deflator Mouse, Beverly Sills plays a woman who masquerades as someone else at a party. Her philandering husband thinks he's discovered a most fascinating woman. Later, he's shocked when he finds this mysterious woman is none other than his own wife. Sills often saves her voice during this rehearsal so she can give her all opening night. Within every production, there's music, song, drama, and dance. The association is spending about a half a million dollars this year just taking operettas to schools and communities in five counties. It sees this as an investment in the future of opera in South Florida. And uh, my philosophy is let everybody see it once. They're not all going to like it, but they might like it. And if we don't give them that opportunity to see it, it's, uh, I think, a failure in our service to the community. The only way to fully appreciate a performance is to see it in person. It may be more enjoyable just knowing how much work and creativity goes into a production. It's obvious opera is important to South Florida's culture. What may be more subtle is its importance to our financial future.